What is up, everyone? It is Ex Machina here for another Low Fidelity Dreams podcast episode. Today, we're going to talk about something that's quite common, um, something that a lot of people don't really think about, but it's honestly the most organic thing, a part of our musical journey, and that is community. This is a very cool topic because this is how I pretty much got a lot of people to check out my music, how I got to where I'm at right now. Honestly, because of community, I was able to get to where I'm at now. Without the people that actually listen to the music, I wouldn't be able to do anything that I'm doing now. Granted, I can always create my art, but in order to receive data, we need to put out our art into the world and get those reactions. Getting those reactions is what data is, and once we have data, we know what direction to head towards. So this episode is going to be pretty fun. We're going to talk about some of the things that I do to get the community going, to get my music out into the community, and how to build a community around your music. So let's get into it. All right, so community, what is it? How can you build it? Where does it come from? Well, there's community everywhere. You have community that's physical in your city. You have community that's online, so Discord groups, you have Twitter, you have Instagram, YouTube, quite a few communities out there as well. I mean, Reddit even, there's all kinds of places where you can build a community, whether it be one person to 100,000 people. You can build communities in different parts of the internet, different parts of the world, different parts of your city, even venues, um, libraries. There are all kinds of ways that you can infiltrate community or even build a community. So the first question, what do you build your community around? For example, I want to build a community around my music. What is community? Community is pretty much just the people around you that you can essentially show your artwork to, and then you can get some sort of reaction or data. Really, just having the organic community is what the best route is, and a lot of ways is just word of mouth and promoting yourself on social media. But really, the easiest way that I was able to build my community was to start locally. Um, so obviously, you can do it on the internet, and it's very easy. You can create groups on Instagram, repost your friend's work, this will help you kind of build a community around a group of friends. You can even do like repost groups. So I did that for a while on Instagram, actually, where we would have like maybe 10 artists that have like a similar genre. Every time we would like post something new, we would post it in the group and everybody in that group would just go and like, comment, share, you know, all of the above. And they would just do that for every single post. And we would do that for a while. And we did that for maybe about six to eight months and I honestly just from doing it for the six to eight months I met some of the coolest people in this community and that's really where it started because about a year a little bit over a year ago when I started the whole Xbox in a journey and the distant ether journey I didn't really have anywhere or any direction to go rather it was like I'm a producer I've been producing for a while I'm interested in a new sound or a different sound that I want to produce so I'm just going to do it and so I started creating track after track, I made an album, and I started poting, posting on Reddit, and I posted on Facebook, Instagram, started doing TikTok, and I started to just get the content out there. So obviously we talked about saturating the market with your content, so really whatever was calling to me, whether it's a track breakdown, a full track video, a live jam... Uh, behind the scenes video, a tutorial, whatever was calling to me, even a podcast episode. If that's what I wanted to post, I would post it. And staying consistent with that and putting out the content, it allowed me to build somewhat of a community around that. Primarily on Instagram, when I mentioned the Instagram repost groups, a lot of the guys that were in that group, I still follow today. And it's even cooler when those guys put out work, even physical work like cassette tapes, um, you know, or CDs or albums, and you go and support them by purchasing it or reposting it, commenting on it, 
really anything just to show that you support their sound, that that tends to give them a good connotation about you. And then, you know, the whole go giving, you want to be able to give yourself in order to receive. And you want to keep giving without trying to get anything in return. And that's how you build the community. And so that's why I put out like so much free content, uh, just because I want to share that information. I want to share that with the world. And I want people to react to it. I want them to be able to see what I do and then try it themselves and take a shot at the sound. Because if they do that, now they are slowly infiltrating my community, which is awesome. That's what I want. I want the community to grow. So I try to build it around my sound, my content, and I just give it out for free. And people tend to gravitate towards that. So building online groups is awesome. So Instagram groups, even Discord groups where you're just reposting stuff, commenting on your friend's stuff, that goes a long way for the algorithm. So that's the first way. The other way that I've been really doubling down on is the local community. So everybody lives somewhere. I mean, you, you, you live on the internet, but you also live somewhere physically. And there's a city of people there or a town of people there. I mean, there might not be a lot or there might be a ton. It depends on where you live. But again, communities can be from one person to 100,000 people or even more. And all you have to do is constantly put out that content. Give it out for free. Get people's reactions within your community. Throw little events, little art pop-up shops, whatever it is. You want to be able to give your sound to the community. And when people come up to you and they talk to you, you talk back and you tell them, yo, this is how I do it. This is what I do. I mean, we can talk more, enjoy, you know, and just have a genuine conversation with them. I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of people don't realize is that as an artist, you know, we have like this tunnel vision of, okay, we want to make sure that the night is going so well. We're going to play the music and make sure that it's a vibe and it's got to be a certain way. But in actuality, you got to read the room. And that also includes talking to the spectators. And so that's one of the things that I've realized is that a lot of the shows for my techno events, at least, you know, I'm DJing and stuff and you know, you're on the decks and it's cool because everybody's vibing and then they'll give you like a little fist bump when you go, you go in and, <laughs> and you're having fun and they're having fun. But for example, the beat community, the lo-fi community, what I've been doing for my lo-fi sets, I'm just jamming, live jamming, like what I do on my usual YouTube videos, but I'm doing it at a physical location. And it's easy for people to just walk up and see what you're doing, all your gear, and they're curious about it. So if they're curious, then strike up a conversation. I've even gone as far as to giving people my cassette tapes for free. Uh, people that were interested or intrigued with the sound that actually came up and then made a comment about it. I mean, I, I literally handed them some of my stuff for free. And that's just the way that I feel like you should start your community. Because if somebody feels that they have something that's quite personal to an artist, you know, getting big or going big or trying to get big in their city, they can see that, they can feel that. And having a, a, like an article of clothing or a piece of music or something that was given to them personally from them, it goes a long way. They cherish those moments. And I mean, 10 years from now, they might even still have that uh, piece of clothing or the cassette tape that I gave them. And they might showcase that, they might show it off. And you never know, just like Kate Bush got way more hits many years after her track came out you know it could happen to you you just never know when your track or your music or whatever it is is going to catch on you just have to keep on putting it out there and constantly build the community because if people truly enjoy what you do and they do have something of yours in a decade from now they're still going to cherish that and that is how you know that you've built a community People want more from you. People want what you create. It's different. It's unique. And you're doing it. But you have to do it. And doing it locally is probably a lot easier, in my opinion, because you can put a face to a name. I've gotten a lot more personal listeners on my Spotify from local people. 
because I'm actually talking to them, doing little album release parties, doing little house parties, um, even art pop-ups. I've been doing those recently too. So really, you just need to get out there and then put yourself out there. You need to give more than you try to take. So giving yourself to the world, to your community, so then the, the newer generation can absorb that. That's very important because community is also built off of the newer generations coming in. Let's just say, I mean, I'm a 27-year-old producer, right? I started when I was 17. That was 10 years ago. When I first started, I looked up to so many artists when I first started producing. And I've, in the 10 years, in the last 10 years at least, I've reached out to maybe a handful. And some of those handful actually responded. And I mean, I would ask questions regarding their production or mixing or something that I was curious about. And some of them would respond. And to me, that was one of the coolest feelings ever seeing that a artist that I looked up to actually responded to one of my messages. It was so cool. He or she built that community and I was able to easily go up to them and ask them a question and become a part of the community. And it felt really nice. And I mean, I, I still support those artists to this day. Now, after a decade, a lot of the things that they did are less cryptic. I know exactly how they achieve their sound, but that all comes with experience. But I was able to access their community easily. And you want others to be able to access your community easily as well. Now, mind you, obviously, if you're as famous as Jay-Z or Eminem or, you know, some big artist or whatever, yeah, it might be a little harder to respond to all 200 messages that you come in, that come in. But in the end, you have to, you have to understand that the people that listen to your music, they are the community. They're the ones that are pushing your journey along. We are artists as creators. We just create, right? We can just put that out into the ether, but the listeners are the ones that will push it to the next level because they're the ones that perceive the sound. We create it. The ones that perceive it are the ones that will do something with it. And so you have to build that community around your music or your art so then people can perceive your art and then they can share it the, the, the way that they want to share it, not the way that you want to share it. Because most of the time, as an artist, we have a vision for our, our sound or our art. But what really happens when it's all said and done. Most of the time, the tracks that we liked the least are people's favorites or the tracks that we had an idea for are being used in a different way now. And so you have to understand that our perception of our art is just one point of data. That means nothing. So building that community to where you can have hundreds of points of data, that is success. That is how you build the community. And with that, you can actually do a lot. I mean, really, you only need a community of like 100 to 500 people. And really, you need 500. Just think about it this way. If you had 500 super fans, 500 people that always purchase that one single that you dropped every month, imagine $500 a month in your pocket. I mean, it's easier said than done, obviously. But building the super fans are important. And you'll only do that by having that face-to-face -face conversation or that personal message or something that's more close than just a comment on a video, a comment um, on Instagram. You want to be able to take that to the next level. And even when you're trying to access communities that are above your level, trying to access artists that are way above your level, the easiest way is to be personable. I don't even send people my music anymore. Like artists that I want to work with, artists that I would enjoy talking with, I never send them any of my music because I will strike up a conversation and yeah, we'll talk about music, but I won't send them any links because I don't want my first interaction to be a marketing, marketing tactic. Rather, maybe the first five to 20 messages, it'll just be personal conversation and then I'll ask to hear some of their new work. You know, I'm intrigued. If I'm genuinely intrigued with an artist, I want to see what they're working on. I don't care if I show them what I'm working on. That That's irrelevant at the time. Because right now I'm gathering information. I'm gathering data. And so once I've gathered that, the information that I need, I can properly 
propose a collaboration or something of that nature, right? But that's when I have enough credibility within their community and you have to have that credibility and they'll always see that. So if you are within their community and you interact with other members of their community, they'll also see that. They'll see that you're active. They'll see that uh, you're worth their time and they'll maybe check out your work. And I think that's the biggest thing. So like I've, I've got a few artists that I look up to, especially when I started my lo-fi journey, there's a few artists that I honestly look up to. And some of those artists actually regularly look at my, my work and my music now. And it's insane, but that's just the cold hard truth is that as long as you give and you keep on giving, somebody will return. And you might not know how big of an impact that might be, but that's all community is. It's a, it's a whole give, 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 and then take. So you, you want to make sure that you build that community by giving as much free content as you can, as far as things about you, about what you do, about your work, it's all free content. There are many ways that you can create content. You can saturate the market as much as you want. Like I, I have my tutorials, I have my podcast, I have my uh, other videos, my music, my live jams everything that's related, I'll post about it and I'll post it for free. And then I'll send it to people that I think might want to look at it. You know, and obviously I won't DM people like, yo, check this out. Rather, I put it in those repost groups, like I mentioned before, those Instagram repost groups, the Discord groups, the Reddit groups. You want to put it in those where it's like a board where people can choose to view it or not to view it. Because most of the time, if you've created a piece that looks eye-catching, intriguing. You know you've crossed off all marks in order to catch the listener. Now, if you post your track and the artwork doesn't look very good, the title is all right, and you don't have any sort of track record built or a community built around your sound, a lot of people won't really pay any mind to what you just dropped. And so, Again, you got you to gotta take everything into account. As a musician, we are artists, we are marketers, we are content creators, and it is, the, it is the truth. And it is the sad truth because back in the day, you would have major labels that would essentially take your intellectual property, your music, and they would market it themselves. And then you would become big or small or nothing depending on how well your, your music sold. But in this current generation, you don't need the major labels anymore. You can be your own label. And I think that's the greatest difference. And you have the people that complain, oh, we have to be content creators now and not just musicians. Well, if you want to give your intellectual property to a major label, which signs a $20 million deal for you where you owe $30 million in the end and you're stuck, you can go that way. Or you can do everything independent and build your community the way that you want, not the way that the major labels want. That's the biggest difference. And so when people complain, oh, we have to be content creators now, it's like, yeah, that is the trade-off. You get to keep 100% of your intellectual property versus none. That is the greatest difference, right? Now, whether you want to complain or not about creating the proper avenues to your music, that's up to you. If you want to make it less accessible for people, that's up to you. Because there are thousands of other artists and musicians out there that would rather do it than not do it. And so the people out there that complain or procrastinate and then just live with the resistance of not creating, those are the guys that are never going to make it because they chose not to do it. Because me as a musician, yeah, I'm a musician, but I'm also other things and I don't mind it because that's just the age that we live in. Because we have full 100% control, I am my own boss. So I got to create everything. Now, obviously, if I'm successful, I can hire, you know, content creating managers or editors or whatever it is that I need to. But that is honestly like the last thing on my mind. Right now, it's me building my vision, my music the way that I want. On that note, you guys keep on creating. I just want you to know that building a community is extremely important. Without the community that listen to your music, you'll never receive any type of data in order to move forward to the direction that you want. So always put out content for free if you can and give people value. Ask yourself, 
every day. How can I make them care? How can I make listeners care about my content? And if it is showing them the process of your beats, show them how you made it, showing them the under the hood of your newest album, do it because that's what they want. Give it to them. That's the community. You got to feed them. You got to feed the hunger because if they keep on getting hungry and they stay hungry, they're going to just die off. So you got to feed them. You got to keep on feeding them and you got to keep it consistent. And then they'll keep on coming back for more because then they'll know that every week at a certain time, you're going to be dropping some content that they're ready to consume. And that's just how it's going to go. All right, guys, make some music, release some content. See you on the next one.